السلام عليكم دكتور اتس ماي اونر تو سيتينج هير سوري تو ستاندينج هير اسكينج ذيس كويشن اند سيم تايم ام فيري ساد تو اسك ذيس كويشن اف ذا قران از ا بوك اوف ذا جايدنس اند ذا اسلام از از ا ريليجن اوف ذا وذ ذا نوليدج اند اند اول ذيس ذن واي وي ار مسلم از ا نيشن از ا ميجورتي we are standing in the back among the nations uh, why when we compare uh, our nation with other nations we see a big hole between between us and them you have asked a very good question very important question very relevant question <laughs> that if quran has so much of information regarding science technology it's a book of knowledge book of guidance and why are we muslims backward it's a very good question the reason is if we look back into the history from the 8th to the 10th century we read in the historical books the europeans they called it as the dark ages dark for whom dark for the europeans the arabs the, ad the advancement they made in science and technology was phenomenal if you had to know about science if you want to do research of science you had to learn arabic like how today we learn english at that time the muslims were on top of the world because we were close to quran and sunnah today the reason the muslims are backward is because we are far away from quran and sunnah so quran is not to blame you and i are to blame if you read in the books of history and books of science i said in my lecture ibn nafis ibn nafis 600 years after the quran was revealed was the first to describe the blood circulation in a textbook we know about william harvey we don't know about ibn nafis so two reason is the number one muslims have gone away from quran sunnah number two media you know media also plays a big role in it in our textbook in my school i never heard about ibn nafis after when i did research i came to know in my textbook was mentioned william harvey the first person who drew the world map of the world was al idrusi in 1154 he was a muslim do you know the numbers that we have 1 2 3 4 what's it called what's it called 1 2 3 4 what is it called say loudly arabic numerals how we have roman numerals 1 2 arabic numeral why because zero was first introduced by the indian the arabs took it up put a decimal point and we have the arabic numerals if you know about alaptusi he was the one who discovered the pythagoras theorem which we learn in school we learn pythagoras theorem we don't know the learn name of alaptusi the square of the hypotenuse is equal in a triangle the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the other two sides of the triangle do you remember you forgotten you remember na no? mashallah good student who was the person who discovered it now you came to know correct better late than never alaptusi muslim trigonometry we learn trigonometry who is the main person of trigonometry albiruni We learn chemistry. Who's the father of chemistry? We know Geber. Geber. It's not Geber. It is Jaber. Jaber ibn Hayyan. They want to, you know, change the name, westernize it. Geber. So Geber looks like a westerner. Sounds like a westerner, correct? It is Jaber. Jaber ibn Hayyan. He is the father of chemistry. Wrote more than two hundred pages, two thousand pages. He was the first to distill alcohol. Alcohol comes from the Arabic word algul. I'll call it Arabic. Algul meaning evil spirit. He distilled it. How many people know about Alkindi? At the time when Newton, who's the biggest scientist in the world history, Newton said all laws are absolute. Alkindi said no, all laws are not absolute; they're relative. Later on, Albert Einstein came. All have heard about Einstein. How many of us have heard about Alkindi? The two brothers. Muhammad Ahmed and Hassan Shakir they told the area of the earth from an angle at the red sea 
at a time when we didn't even were sure whether the earth was spherical or not. At that time they told the area of the earth which was quite accurate. If you read about Alibni Abbas, he wrote 2000 pages on medicine. If you know about Alibni Sina, Avicenna, Avicenna sounds like a western name, it's Alibni Sina, Aristotle of the East. You can keep on giving examples, Muslims were on top of the world. Because we were close to Quran and Sunnah. Today, we are far away from the Quran and Sunnah. That time, if you wanted to get advanced in science and technology, it was compulsory you learnt Arabic. Arabic was a language on top of the world. Today, where is it? Who's to blame? We are to blame. So my request to all the Muslim brothers and sisters, you go back to the Quran. Study the Quran. Quran is the most positive book in the world. It's a proclamation to humanity. It's a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It's a warning to the heedless. It's a guide to the erring. It's an assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering and a hope to those in despair. You can get all these benefits only if you read the Quran with understanding. If you don't know Arabic, read the translation of the Quran in the language you understand the best. Implement it, inshallah, it will be a guidance for you for your full life and you'll see your life change. Hope that answers the question.